Hey girls and gals, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today's video is going to be a list of some of my most anticipated releases for March of 2024. I try and do one of these every single month. As always, a couple of disclaimers. I will have all of the information about the books in the description bar. I'll also have the book cover and the release date on screen with me as I'm talking about them. This is by no means a list of every single book that comes out in March. Just a few of the ones that I am really looking forward to. Um, also, another disclaimer, my hands are a little red and my scalp is a little red because I just did my hair dye last night. So it's a little rough. I understand it's it's not permanent but based on my filming schedule I do have to film this video today so if you see the fact that um, my hands are a little red and my scalp area is a little red um, you should have you should have seen my shower last night it looks like a scene out of Carrie um, but with that all being said let's just go ahead and get into the books we're gonna talk about today because there are some really cool books coming out in March the first couple of books in this video and honestly most of the books in this video all come out March 5th. It seems to be a very, very popular release date for releases this month, but the first book is Murder Road by Simone St. James. This book takes place in July of 1995. Um, I was, I was a month old dating myself there, um, but I guess this is technically historical fiction horror if we're going off of the 20 years rule, but this is about a young couple who find themselves haunted by a string of gruesome murders committed along an old deserted road. It kind of gives wrong terms vibes, um, like the movie Wrong Turn, more so because the synopsis does start out with the sentence, April and Eddie have taken a wrong turn, they're looking for a resort town where they're going to take a vacation, and they pick up a mysterious hitchhiker. This sounds like a lot of horror movies that I've seen um, and enjoy the premise of, but I don't think I've read a book necessarily like this. Road trip horror is not something I normally gravitate towards, but I do love Simone St. James, and every single book I've picked up by this author I've loved, so looking forward to this one. Next up we have one of my favorite covers in this whole batch of books and that would be Thirst. This is a translated piece of fiction. The author is Marina Yuzuzuk and the translator is Heather Cleary. This says it has echoes of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and it's written in the vein of feminist gothic writers like Shirley Jackson, Daphne du Maurier, and Carmen Maria Machado. And this one is a literary gothic vampire story. I also believe it's queer. So all of those, all of those sound wonderful to me, but this is across two different time periods, two women confront fear, loneliness, mortality, and a haunting yearning that will not let them rest. I love vampire books. I love vampire horror. I love gothic horror. Say no more. Just based on the fact that it does seem to be a gothic horror, it has a gorgeous cover. Um, this kind of gives me, I feel like maybe like woman eating vibes or there's another one that I'm forgetting at the moment, but I tend to really, really love gothic vampire horror fiction. So definitely looking forward to this one. The next book that comes out March 5th is The Invisible Hotel by Yeji. Y. Ham, and this is a work of literary horror in the gothic tradition, another gothic literary horror of those, I, I love those subgenres of horror. The Invisible Hotel is a startling speculative tale of a woman adrift and a country's shifting identity in the long aftermath of the Korean War. This sounds like such a wild premise. I mean, I also think just like based on the very out there-ness of the cover, like at first you think it's a plain cover, you look at it, there's something very uncanny about the woman with her face and like to the wall and the way that she's situated. I think that's very unnerving. Um, but our main character, Yewon, I believe, dreams of a hotel. In the hotel, there are infinite keys to infinite rooms and a quiet terror. She is desperate to escape. When she wakes, she sees a young woman out of her job at a convenience store trapped in the tiny South Korean village of her birth, watching her mother wash the bones of their ancestors in the decrepit bathtub. Every house has them, these rotting and fragmented bones, reminders of what they have all lost to a war that never seems to end. So this one sounds very interesting. It is, it says it recalls international trailblazers like the vegetarian and the memory police. Those are two very 
different books to me. So I'm curious to see just in terms of comp titles like how it's like the vegetarian and how it's like the memory police because those those are very different um, books to me but this just seems very unsettling, very dreamlike. I enjoy historical horror. I'm looking forward to checking this one out as well. Moving away from gothic and historical horror, the next book on the list is What Grows in the Dark by Jack or Jake Evans. This one is a contemporary horror novel about a phony spiritualist who returns to her hometown to assist in an investigation that eerily mirrors her sister's death and forces her to confront the secrets that she has been running from. So I'm very intrigued about this for First of all because I do love a premise about it seems like she's like a phony spiritualist and she's making a living off of investigating paranormal activity, faking the results however when she returns to her small town it seems like um, the paranormal activity is actually quite real, there's something sinister going on. This is also tagged as queer fiction and I love queer horror so I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued to check this out. I do actually have this one as a NetGalley arc that I need to read so I'm very committed to reading this one very soon. I feel like this is going to be a horror novel that's like very very paranormal and unsettling and small town horror that I tend to really enjoy. The next book I'm going to talk about is the last book in this list that comes out March 5th and that is The Haunting of Velkwood by Gwendolyn Keast and this one has such an interesting synopsis. This is a chilling novel about three childhood friends who miraculously survived the night everyone in their suburban neighborhood turned into ghosts perfect for fans of Yellow Jackets I have not seen Yellow Jackets, but from everything I've heard about it, all of the things that are like used as comp titles for it, I know I'd love it. So I need to get on that. But this is very intriguing. The Velkwood vicinity was the topic of occult theorists, tabloid one hour documentaries, and even some investigations as the block of homes disappeared behind a near impenetrable veil that only three survivors could enter and only one has in the past 20 years until now. So this is a suburban ghost story about a small town that has trapped three young women who must confront the past in order for them to have a future. Um, that sounds very interesting. I've heard a lot about this author. I know this author has won um, Bram Stoker Awards. It's I've seen her work on a lot of lists. I've just never gotten around to it. So I think this is a great place to start for me. I'm, I'm really intrigued about a town that everyone just randomly turned into ghosts one day. So <laughs> intrigued about this one. Next up, coming out on March 12th, this is Those Beyond the Wall by Micaiah Johnson. Now this says this is the space between worlds number two. I think this is just like based in the same universe, in the same city setting as the space between worlds. I read that a couple years ago, absolutely loved it. It was wonderful sci-fi. This one says it's the second book in the series. None of like the character names in the synopsis, I I don't remember them from the first one so I'm thinking it's like the same city and it's just a spin-off so we don't have the same characters I don't believe like I don't think it's a traditional sequel but it's just set in the same world I could be wrong though because it's been a while but I absolutely love this space between worlds but this is a sci-fi thriller um, and when she's faced with a coming apocalypse a woman must reckon with her past to solve a series of sudden and inexplicable deaths this is a dystopia this is a sci-fi I really loved the space between worlds because I thought it perfectly blended like sci-fi concepts and a murder mystery concept so this one sounds like it is more of the same I cannot wait to check out more by this author again it's been a while since I have read that book but I remember reading it and thinking this world is so lush and so rich that you could have a whole entire series just based on this world so um, I think that's what the author is doing which is super exciting so our main character scales she's the best at what she is she's also kind of giving Bangalore vibes if anyone plays Apex at least based on this cover, um, but Scales is tasked with finding the cause and putting the end to a series of murders. She teams up with a frustratingly by the books partner and a brisk but brilliant scientist in order to uncover the truth, delving into multiple worlds to track down this invisible killer. But when what they find points to something bigger and more corrupt than they could have ever foreseen, it could spell doom for the entire world. So very intrigued. I like a um, speculative detective story where they're trying to solve one thing and then they uncover something huge in the process so I will absolutely be checking out I believe this is this author's sophomore novel. These next couple books all come out the 19th and the first on that list is Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Frida Abike Imere and this one is the author of Ace of Spades. I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was such a well done YA novel that actually felt like it was written 
for YA audience and felt like real teenagers. Um, sometimes with YA novels, I feel like the characters feel like they should be older, like they don't actually feel like teens. I thought Ace of Spades was absolutely wonderful. Um, and if you haven't checked that out, I know it gets a lot of hype. I think the hype is well deserved for that one. So if you haven't checked that out, but this is a YA contemporary mystery. First of all, very gorgeous cover. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of thrillers and horror this year having to deal with like bird imagery which is cool I'm here for. This is about our main character who is new to a boarding school and discovers dark secrets and cover-ups after her roommate disappears so this was something that also I feel like Ace of Spades did really well was like a dark academia setting that took place in a very prestigious boarding school. This looks like more of the same um, although the other one technically wasn't a boarding school. Um, it doesn't matter. This one is. The tagline is secrets haunt these hallowed halls. I'm very much here for this YA thriller mystery where our main character has to kind of uncover some secrets, some cover-ups, some sinister things probably that are happening behind the scenes in this boarding school. Next up is A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock. This one is Mexican Gothic meets the Lie Tree by way of Oscar Wilde and Mary Shelley in this delightfully witty horror debut. This is a captivating tale of two Victorian gentlemen who are hiding their relationship away in a botanical garden who embark on a Frankenstein style experiment with unexpected and unintended consequences. Um, this is the second book I think that has been compared or comped with like a Mary Shelley title and I love Frankenstein. Um, I, I'm very intrigued. This is a historical queer horror with you know themes of Frankenstein it's got this beautiful botanic cover so I think the botanical garden is going to be such a interesting setting for this book and I just I love Frankenstein I tend to also really enjoy books that kind of play upon the same sort of themes and exploring Frankenstein as a thematic work so I'm very much looking forward to this one this says it's an extraordinary tale of family fungus and more than a dash of bloody revenge and I cannot wait to check out this Frankenstein style inspired book. Next up we have another cover that I just love and that would be Rainbow Black by Maggie Thrash and this is part murder mystery part gay international fugitive love story set against the 90s satanic panic and it spans 20 years in the life of a young woman pulled into its undertow. This is about our main character Lacey. Her parents run a daycare. I know we're already getting worried about that um, based on the satanic Satanic panic. Um, when the satanic panic hits, her parents are accused of crimes against the children that they are taking care of and it's part of the mass hysteria that's sweeping the nation so I believe this is following Lacey as a child like watching her parents trial and then Lacey as an adult. I'm not sure. Cool cover, cool concept. I absolutely will be checking this one out. And then last but not least yet another gorgeous cover. This one comes out March 26th and that would be Diabola by Jennifer Thorne. I've read something else by this author and really enjoyed it. This seems very very different different than the book that I've read by this author but nevertheless very intrigued. I'm really not sure like what this one is about um so let's give it a try. First of all I'm obsessed with the cover but our main character Anna only has two rules for the annual Pace family destination vacations. Tread lightly and survive. Seems like a very dysfunctional family. Um, they're all staying at a gorgeous remote villa and it seems like the perfect place to endure so much family togetherness. That is until things start going off the rails, there's strange noises at night, there's unsettling warnings from the locals, and there's a dark violent past of the villa itself to contend with. Jennifer Thorne skewers all too familiar family dynamics in this sly, wickedly funny vacation gothic. Beautifully unhinged and deeply satisfying, Diavola is a sharp twist on the classic haunted house story, exploring loneliness, belonging, and the seemingly inescapable bonds of family mythology. So I'm, I'm very intrigued. I love a good haunted house story. Cover seems exciting and I'm really interested and intrigued to see what this author is going to do with all of these concepts. And there you have it. Those are some of the books that I am so excited to get to in March. I cannot wait to check them out. We have a really good list here. Really good 
horror-centric, queer-centric, gothic, historical. We've got a little bit of a bunch of horror subgenres in here and some sci-fi and some mystery as well. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let me know out of this list what do you want to pick up or if I missed a book, if you're excited for a book in March that I have not talked about here, definitely let me know that as well. Subscribe to my channel for all of the cozy gaming and bookish content. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!